uh, first of all, welcome everyone. I'd like to officially start. Uh, my name is Gabrielle Bame, and I am on the board of directors for the New York City chapter for ATD as the vice president of special interest groups. Um, Kate Tarasimova, who's co-hosting this with me, is the assistant VP of SIGS, um, and we've worked closely together to start these learning labs. We really wanted to have um, a platform for um, learning professionals to be experimental and to try things out that, that you know, weren't necessarily ready for prime time, but you still wanted to just try them and get some feedback and and we, we don't have enough places where we can do that. So that really was what the um, inspiration for the learning lab was. Um, this is our first time going virtual. And one thing that I, I would like to uh, do today is we're gonna wear, and I meant to bring a hat so that I could literally put a hat on my head when I did this. But one of the things that I always used to do when I used to teach train, trainer courses was I used to call them meta moments where you kind of step behind the scenes. I have a little like a little leopard hat. I'll do that again. <laughs> um, uh, where you step behind the scenes and I'm like, okay, in a session where I was, we weren't talking about training, I wouldn't said, say this, but I'm gonna go behind the scenes right now so you can see what I'm thinking about as a trainer and what's happening behind the scenes in terms of some of the technology. Because you're all here as learning professionals as well. So when I put this, I'm like, I'm stepping behind the scenes. So that's my little, my little leopard, or I guess it's a leopard, yeah, a little leopard. It looks like it, yeah. Yeah, um, so we'll do that. So, uh, because this is a big experiment, there are things that might work great, there are some things that might not work, we don't know. Um, if it's not working, what we'll do is we'll kind of go behind the scenes so you can see kind of what's happening um, as we go through. Um, Kate, uh, Greg, would you like to add anything but before we start today? No, let's have fun. Uh, yes, so if you have any technical difficulties, you can message me, I'll figure it out. Yeah, so Great. Kate okay. and I are tag teaming during the stuff I'm facilitating. Kate's going to be my producer behind the scenes and vice versa. So um, you can, in the chat, you, that little drop down, you can chat to just one person by changing that drop down from everyone. Um, and, uh, and then you can go from there. So, and Jack, is there anyone else here that wanted to sign up for the, our five to 10 minute activity open mic? Jack Appleman took us up on that. Is there anyone else who would like to do that? Anyone? Okay, and if we have time at the end, we can, we can try that as well. So, um, great. So I'm so sorry, I was just getting called. Just by the way, those of you who know, I've been looking for a job. I became unemployed a few weeks ago and it's a horrible time to look for a job, but I think I got a job. Yay, nice. yeah, that's okay. fair. Like literally Congrats. right before this, I got off the phone from an interview and it went super well and I'm pretty sure I've got the seal set. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Yay, that's <laughs> great. Good news and hard times, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, keep Very us, post keep us posted. Great. Yeah. What's that? Keep us posted about it. Definitely. Okay, so what I'd like to do, um, we have a few um, activities that we will be uh, doing. Um, I have one in Padlet, like an, an intro activity, but actually I asked Greg to do a brief activity and then Jack will do his activity and then I will do my activity and then I will go in um, and actually, you know what, as I'm talking about this, I realize I put together a slide for this and I'm not showing it to you. So let me show you. Hold on a moment. Are you sure you want to try that? Well, I know that's a thing. It's <laughs> crashing, but I'm going to try it again. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Oh, Jen, some, Jen's also looking for a job. It's Where rough now. Okay, so just in terms of what we did, so I know some people just joined, so I'd ask that uh, you go in the participant list and make sure that your actual name is what's represented for you there, um, which I have to do actually, because I'm, on, I'm, I'm now going as uh, ATD, right? Um, well, I will do that in a minute. I, I'm Gabrielle Bame, and I'm the one showing up as ATD NYC in a minute, I will change that. But, um, so what we're going to be doing, and I just want to show you the agenda. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. 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 Fantastic. Okay. So uh, we're starting now. We're, we're going to start with some icebreakers and short activities. Um, then we'll be doing um, an experiment uh, for a hands-on activity about around radical candor. 
And then Kate will be leading an activity that's going to help us identify what kind of experience we want to do going forward at the next learning lab. So before we start uh, the first section, does anyone have any questions? And please make sure that you are all on video. I just want to make sure that we, we are on video. I have a question. Yeah, I do too. Great. Let's get the questions out. What's uh, who? That was a good question. Um, sure. Are we going to get the slides after? That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> we are. And I also just want to double check. Oh, no, it is recording. Okay. I, I set recording. it up so that it automatically records. You okay. will get the slides. And also, we're, we're recording this. So we also will post the recording. Thank you. Great. Uh, I have just a really quick uh, administrivia question on Zoom. Um, I am trying to uh, go into the chat. I have everyone, and it's not letting me type where it says type message here. Oh. Is anyone else having that issue? I did not. Uh, I haven't tested. Uh, tested. Okay, it may just be me. Um, do I need to, other than clicking onto this meeting, do I have to uh, register with Zoom. Does that have anything to do no. with functionality? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll keep on keeping on then. Thank you. Yeah, try closing your chat window and then um, reopening it and see if that works. Okay. Okay. Um, and I see Juliet and Deborah are here. Um, Juliet and Deborah, is there any way we can get you on video? Hello? We just it may be distracted. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I do have a question as well. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Athlete. I'm totally new here. Um, it's nice to see all these new strangers, <laughs> possible new friends. New friends. Um, new friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I actually, um, I just got my master's in education last year. Um, I'm actually in sales, but I am... I have a complex story, but I am wondering, um, I really am wondering about transitioning out of becoming, out of being a sales executive to being a trainer, because what I do in my job is I essentially mm -hmm. train people all day about the products that I sell. So, but I'm wondering about the association, like it's the Association for Talent Development. So is this actually more HR or based, or is it really for anyone who's doing training for corporate environments or training for academic environments? I see there's a lot of people with a lot of varying backgrounds. Yeah, Athlete, this is Greg. Um, I think it'd probably be best to give a little background really quick, and then we'll move this offline. I, we can talk individually yeah. and probably helpful. Uh, we used to be called the Association for Training or American Society for Training and Development until right. about five years ago, and then they renamed us and tried to broaden it to talent development. So oh, we kind okay. of accomplished a lot more, but we're still very training, learning focused at this point. Okay. Most of our members are. Okay, but that's what I- Let's have a talk offline I and, and I can tell you a little bit more about what we offer and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, because I was okay. looking on the website, but I couldn't be, I wasn't entirely sure. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll, I'll answer any questions you have. Thank you. Great. Cool. All right. Abby, you ready for me? I'm ready for, for Greg, and, and you might want to show people how to get to that gallery view. I I'm will, so I need you to stop sharing first. Yep, all right. So everybody, at the top of your screen, you should see right up, well, it depends on how you get it set up, of course, but at the very top right, there should be something that says gallery view. Does everybody see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, make sure you click on that. You'll see everybody at one time on the screen. I have four rows of people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're gonna do a little network. This is my first time doing a virtual networking uh, event. So this is gonna be interesting. Gabby found some things online that Zoom offers and uh, we're, told me to pick one and I chose one that's called, Would You Rather? So I'm gonna ask you a question and then if it's the first choice, you raise up one finger. If it's the second choice, you raise up two, okay? So that's what we do. So we're gonna see how everybody um, comes out of this. So the first question is, would you rather this meeting was in person or virtual? Wait, what, what oh, was we're, the we're pretty, we're pretty split. So in person is yeah. one and virtual is two. So cool. Okay, neat. One and two. Um, okay. Greg, is it possible for other two folks who are not on the camera to share their answers via chat since we cannot see? Yeah, if, yeah Juliet, Deborah, if, if you all don't have cameras or whatever, if you want to just throw your answers one or two in the chat, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. 
in person, Deborah. Okay, great. Deborah, are you able to get on video, um, Deborah and Julia? If you can, that would be really helpful. If not, just uh, just answer in chat. All right. Oh, there's Deborah. Yay. There you are. Hey, that cool. worked out. Okay. okay, next question. Would you rather, when you're doing your work, sit at a desk or table or sit on a couch or, couch or comfortable chair? Make sure we can see your finger. Like, Penny, pull yours down a little bit so you can see. There you go. Oh, we got some comfortable chair people here. I figured Gabby would be for sure. <laughs> I need structure. I want a table and because I need to spread out everywhere. So. Yep. Um, would you rather be the CEO or another C-suite executive? Oh, we have a couple CEO people all year. So most of them are not. Only, wait, two CEO people that want to be CEOs. I love that. Like, cool. <laughs> I want to be COO. I want to be the number two guy. Mm -hmm. That would make me happy. I don't want to be the face. I want to be the, the behind the scenes guy that does the, gets some stuff done. Um, here's, here's an interesting one for me from an employee experience, employee engagement standpoint. Would you rather do something you love for a little bit of money or something you hate for a lot of money? Hmm. I would like to do something I love for a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's exactly. number three. Exactly. What, what she said. <laughs> I think we're all in the same boat. So that's what we're all, that's all what we all strive for. <laughs> Would you rather work four 10 hour days or five eight hour days? Everybody want, wants that extra day a week, of course. Four um, um, Would you rather have TV in the background or music in the background? Ooh. And see, I'm like neither. I don't want anything in the background. I like quiet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, more some music. Okay. Um, would you rather stay with your company in a new and unfamiliar role or move to a new company doing the exact same role that you have now? So some people like the consistency, some people want some change. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> okay, would you rather have coffee or snacks? Ooh, that's the hardest one. I, I don't. I don't do coffee, so it's are, really easy for me. <laughs> are they healthy snacks or are they rated X by Weight Watchers? Or snacks? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get specific on that one. Uh. Okay. Would you rather adopt a cat or a dog? Oh, we have some cat people. Yay! Zero. Everybody. Or, or neither one. Yeah, you might be allergic to either one. So, um, would you rather sing or dance? Uh. And we, I think we got, look at all these dancers. Oh, we got a couple singers. All right. Awesome. Um, would you rather watch Disney Plus or Netflix? Ooh. I'm such a Disney fan. Oh, wow. You people are oh, Netflix wow. people. Wow. <laughs> don't know. I've never seen Netflix. Don't know. So, don't know. <laughs> um, would you rather go to a movie theater or watch a movie at home? Oh, wait. Wait, wait. Yeah. Right. Oh, well. Most people would. Well, it's kind of split, actually. Interesting. Would you rather buy a gift or make a gift? Okay, we got some creative people here. Um, would you rather I stop or I continue? Okay, we'll continue. We got a few more. Okay. I came prepared at least. So Gabby, you just tell me when you need me to stop. Time yeah, maybe, maybe one more. Oh, one more. Yeah, just one more, just because oh, wow. we have yeah. others to go. Okay. I'll show you my other love. Would you rather go to Walt Disney World or Universal Studios Orlando? Ooh, either. Oh, we have oh, Descent. enemies. Yes, Descent, big time. I'm descent. a huge Disney fan, so I need to talk to all you that want to go to Universal. Cool. <laughs> So thank you all for that. Hope treat. you found that was a little bit interesting and, and learned a little bit about each other at the same time. Um, very good. Yeah. I'm, I'm not leaving forever. I'm just signing back in. I, I don't have all the functionality I'm used to. So I'll be right back. This is Penny. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Penny. Sure. Hey. Oh, and Nadia has joined us now. Hey, Nadia. Yes. I've been participating in your questions. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I just saw you because I was looking at my sheet and looking up at the same time. Yep. So, um, Jack, would you, would you, is your, um, is your activity uh, an icebreaker? Or is it on a specific content? Can you just do a, a brief summary? Yeah, it's on uh, content. I would need to share my slides. Uh, it would be, so I would share my slides. A couple of volunteers would do a quick exercise. Then would be, there would be critiquers. 
Okay. Okay. So mine's more of an icebreaker. So I, I'll do, I'll do mine first. Yep. Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm so afraid of sharing my screen. Um, but, um, all right. So tell me when you can see, tell me when you can see my screen. Hold on. Okay. And what I suggest is um, for the gallery view, if you drag um, the gallery view. Kind so the of gallery view goes away, Gabby? You can move it over. Just, well, it just becomes a, str a string of people, but you okay. can move that out of the way, so yeah. Oh, okay, great. Just a suggestion, very quickly. If you go up top, there is view options. If you click that and choose side-by-side -side mode, it gives you opportunity to see everyone and you can drag that back and forth. Not everybody has it set up right away. Right. Okay, yes. Top. Good, good pointer. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, part of what we want to do with this learning lab is get people to uh, stretch outside of their comfort zone. So what, uh, what I'd like to do is first of all, and, and we're just going to demonstrate this before I ask you any questions, what I want you to do is go to your Zoom toolbar and click the annotate uh, icon. And once you click that, you should have a bunch of other options. And what we're going to do for this one is if you click the stamp option, if everyone could do that, and I pick see one of the... It's going to be under view options. Go to view options up top, and then you can choose annotate. Ah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, actually, in the, in the um, participant list, if I, and I'm, going to, I'm actually going to clear all of those check marks because we've got a lot of new people. But if you, if you are having any problems, um, you can, uh, you know, uh, click the, the X or, or uh, text Kate and, and let us know. But what I'd like you to do is click annotate, go to the stamp, pick one of the, the icons, either the check mark or the, I'm actually gonna click the little star and then just click anywhere on the screen. Okay, so you see, you can use that. Now, for this activity, I don't recommend using the green check mark or the red heart because we have a section that's red and a section that's, uh, that's green. So it might be difficult to see. Um, or, or actually, depending on where you are uh, putting the icon, you might want to put it somewhere else. Um, but that's one th way that you can actually have people um, put things on a screen. So I'm just sharing my slides with you and then you can do that. And then I actually have an option. If you stop for one second, I'm going to clear all drawings and that clears it, right? The other thing that you can do is if you uh, go to spotlight and click the arrow, you can point to somewhere on the screen. Now, this is one of the things that's different between Zoom and um, Gabby, you said go to spotlight. Where Please, I don't see a spotlight. Yeah. I think it's an arrow. Annotate. Yeah, there's an a oh, arrow. Yeah, it's go to arrow. arrow. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And, and then it'll show your name. The only problem is that in Zoom, only one person can point an arrow at a time, which is really frustrating. In, uh, in WebEx, you would see everybody's arrows at once, which is why for this, we're going to use the stamp. So, uh, so go back to the stamp and pick something um, that will show up. And I'm going to ask you a series of questions and we're going to see how many people um, find these things in their comfort zone. Oops, sorry. And how many people find it in their stretch zone and how many people find it in their danger zone. And again, everyone stop for one second because we're going to start and we're gonna, I'm gonna clear it in between every question because we really want in the learning lab for people to stretch, right? Mm -hmm. People still keep pointing. Okay, don't point yet until I ask the question. Okay, all right. So the first question, we're, we're gonna talk about some physical risks first. So the first is riding in a car without your seatbelt. So for riding in a car without your seatbelt, where is that for you? Okay, so it's danger zone for a lot of people, comfort zone for some people. 
Um, so great. Interesting. So we've got some variance there. All right. I'm going to clear that and I'm going to ask you the next question. The next question is walking, hello, <laughs> walking along the edge of a cliff. <laughs> and if you want to clear your drawings, like if you click somewhere that you didn't mean to click, you can go and there's a clear and you can do clear my drawings and it will, uh, it will go away. Hmm. Interesting. I'm having a hard time getting, um, okay. Again, everyone, Okay. So only two people, it's in their comfort zone. Most people, it's in their danger zone. All right, so that's walking on a cliff. All right, I'm gonna clear this one. And then the next one is um, going to the grocery store without a mask after hearing someone in your neighborhood has tested positive for COVID-19. <laughs> danger, 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 danger. <laughs> Okay, we're all experiencing some anxiety here. Okay. okay. Oh my goodness. All right. So now we're going to change to ones that are not physical risks, but more emotional risks. So I'm going to clear all of those. Um, so the, the next one here is, um, oh my goodness, this is, I'm having such a hard time switching my screens. It's so frustrating. Uh, Give me one second, folks. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, I'm gonna clear all drawings. Okay, the first one is singing a song in front of a large group of people. Alone? <laughs> <laughs> if I'm in a group, no problem. If I'm alone, uh, yeah. it's different. Okay. There's some people, it's in the, most people here, it's in their stretch zone. That's very interesting. Okay. I'm the only one who's in the comfort zone, I guess. Okay. <laughs> You're a performer for Pete's sake. I know. Okay. So the next one, I'm going to clear this. All right. The next one is sharing stories about your family. Okay. So that one's less of a danger zone to most people. Some people, it's a stretch. Some people tend to be more private than others. All right. Um, let's do one more and that is uh facilitating virtual team building activities <laughs> so a lot of people's comfort some people stretch some of us are used to doing live stuff all right excellent so anyone want to talk about anything that that they put in their danger zone or stretch zone? What are, what are stretches for you? And, and, and just thinking about how you can use the learning lab to, to stretch you and, and get some practice doing those things that stretch you or get you closer to that danger zone. Any thoughts on that from anyone here? I think doing things like this is helpful because it, just creativity and trying to come up with new things so it's not always the same old same old activities <laughs> so that's what i've been looking for as like i just don't want to be stale yeah that totally makes sense any other insight from anyone i really like the idea of being able to try something new Mm -hmm. in front of a group that isn't the usual book club members that i get together and that the people here are have have an insider's view of whatever it is I might be practicing, mm -hmm. and um, I would hope have good feedback. Um, whereas my book club members are wonderful, but they haven't really done that same activity before. You know, they they haven't been in that same seat. <laughs> mm hmm. Great. And and I have a question actually. Poor Penny keeps getting booted and rejoining. <laughs> Um, so, uh, just by the way, I found this online. I actually went on YouTube and I looked up, um, virtual icebreakers or zoom icebreakers. And I found this and it's actually from a company called training wheels. So I have the, 
the info here and I will actually include a link to the, the site. Um, but so this is something that I just found um, online as well as the activity Greg did. I also found the same way. Um, one thing that that's again frustrates me about the difference between Zoom and uh, WebEx, which uh, I'm used to, is that uh, using the stamps, you can't tell who put their stamp where. Um, whereas in WebEx, if you use the arrows with your name, you'd be able to see who is pointing to which um, area. Um, my question is, do you think that it, it, it is still valuable even though you can't see who is placing their icon where? Yes, it's definitely valuable just to see like if there is certain things where you may think is very dangerous and other people are very comfortable with that, that would, I think that's valuable to see. Mm -hmm. I think it's safe. Right. I think it would be more interesting though if it wasn't a circle, that it was just three consecutive lines on the screen so you could tell easier tell which which area people were putting their things in versus trying to some were putting at the top some at the bottom so it's just easier to see that way you could do it as a poll right and and, and i just wanted to show people that you could use this annotating yeah. tool um but yeah you absolutely could do it that way i think it's interest um so just you know my background is actually a master's in human sexuality education so mm -hmm. Um, it's actually for folks where you might be talking about sensitive subjects or to say training about sexual harassment or training about, you know, gender in the workplace or any other thing like that. An anonymity might actually be a positive thing where I see, you know, having the names might be really great in other instances. Anonymity might be really great in other particular mm -hmm. instances. Right. Good point. Absolutely. Thank you. So I'm going to do one other um, intro activity and uh, that is going to be in Padlet. Now for this, um, I'm going to stop sharing and, and I have another icebreaker that I'd like to do. I'm, I'm just trying to think the, um, the best sequencing of, of the activities. Give me one second. Let me start out. Um, but I do want to introduce this tool. So let me just send you the link. And I'm going to paste it in the chat area. So So if everybody could go to this um, Padlet, and if you haven't, do sign in by going to the top right and clicking sign in. Otherwise, anything you post, we're not going to know. It'll just say anonymous, and we won't know who posted it. I've never used this, so I'm excited. OK. I haven't either. So, so this is um, a. This is, hold on one second, and I'm actually going to oh, shoot. Hmm. What, is someone having issues? Oh, it just says Padlet, uh, Padlet does not support your browser, Internet Explorer. Open this pa page in Microsoft Edge instead. Um, super fun. <laughs> okay, great. So for this, this, this activity, what I'd like to do is, um, actually, I am going to share my screen for just a moment. So the first thing is, and give me one second, folks, because I did this earlier and then I didn't save, so, and, Okay. Okay, so let me share my screen again. So, and then you're gonna go back to this on your browser after I show you how this works. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Let me know when you can see it. It's on. Wonderful. So what you're all going to do is in Padlet, what this is, is it's a virtual cork board. And uh, what we're going to do and is you would click 
the little plus sign. And for each of these in this column here, I'd like people to post something that says how you've been doing since this whole COVID-19 stuff started happening. Um, today in this column, you can post something about how are you today? And then something new I want you to post and don't post yet because I want to show you, I want to show you how uh, different ways of doing it. Just <laughs> a second, okay. Overachievers. I, I'm into enthusiasm though. Um, and then something <laughs> new is something new that you've tried or that you've learned since you've been in isolation. Now I want to show you, if you just click the plus sign, you, um, you can put a, the summary um, here. So uh, for example, for something new, I'm just going to put um, gardening. Um, and then you can write something in here, but you have all these options here. You can upload something, you can post a link. And what I really like is this, this little um, search thing. If you click that, you can actually, it's actually looking up gardening. I can look at little jiffies. I can look at images. So I'm actually going to pick, oh, oh I used an image. Let me do this. Oh, I like this because that's got like a little dog or piggy or something, <laughs> right? So you can post that and it'll actually post it um, as, as a visual, right? You can also, um, if you click the little more, um, the little three dots, you can also even do like a doodle if you want, right? Um, so there are, different ways that you can post things. So what I'd like everyone to do is some, take some time. You don't have to put one in every column, just if you have um, an idea for something that you want to uh, post, uh, you can post it, okay? So, um, so everyone, you can just do that now. Just click the little plus sign in any of the columns and add a picture, add text, you can add a jiffy, you can add a, a link to something. Um, so, uh, everyone just take some time to do that. And then when you're done, you can comment or click the little heart to like what other people post. So we're gonna take about five minutes to do this. Great, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. So all of you should be doing this on your browser and then, and then we'll come back to the Zoom session. <laughs> Can't stop looking at the bear. <laughs> And this, this tool is really interesting because it's used a lot by teachers, by school teachers, like K through 12, but I haven't seen it used much in, in corporate and I actually think it's, it's a really flexible tool. I really, really love it. And I've used it for a lot of things, so. <laughs> Again, take time to read what other people are posting. You can comment on what other people are posting. If you can relate to it, click the little heart and you can like it. You could even like if you if you're using this on your um, if you're using this on your device on a phone you could even like take pictures your own pictures i like the vibing <laughs> it's so much fun i feel like a kid <laughs> i don't know why mine is like freezing ah. Is this the paid version or is this the free one? Um, this is, well, the only difference between the free one and the, um, the paid one is the number of Padlets that you're allowed. 
So like, like this is a board, like you're only allowed three boards in the free version and you have a few other like backgrounds and stuff like that. So, but I, I do pay for it because I used it a lot. Um, And if, if, if you haven't yet, and, and, you know, rather than continuing to post, take some time and, and look at what other people um, have, have written. I'm only seeing one or two other people. Should I be seeing a lot of people? Mm -hmm. So maybe refresh in your browser. Um, I got gotcha. you. Okay. That makes sense. I see yours, Jack. Okay. Now I see a lot of them. Okay. And comment in in <laughs> oh. Yeah, I've binge watched probably like six or seven series since I've been home. I just saw Frozen 2, Greg. Did you? We just watched it a few days ago. I think I like it better than Frozen 1. I do too. <laughs> I do too. And it, you know, um, it, sometimes they make these movies for kids, but it's like really some of the references are clearly for adults. Like that was totally like the so, Karate Kid song, that 80s like power ballad man. Yeah. That's right. Disney Pixar <laughs> movies are not made for children. They're made for adults with parts that appeal to children. Just FYI. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Wow. So should we not talk about Tiger King? Just kidding. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Somebody already did. So. <laughs> Let's not start, kids. <laughs> I've heard. I, I haven't watched it yet. But yeah. Oh, God. It's hot. It's like horrible, but also amazing. And <laughs> That's Talk great. about viral. That's one of those things that just blew up out of nowhere in like two yes. seconds. Yes. Yeah. Really and it's a true oh my story. Gosh. This is the craziest part. <laughs> Oh my God! Wonderful. <laughs> I think the show has brought the nation together. I don't like. <laughs> no one can not talk about it. It's great. I mean, no spoilers for people because I don't no, want to no, no. spoil it for anybody. But I, I don't want to spoil it for anyone. You should go through all the emotions watching it by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Content warning: It is crazy. <laughs> so it's a good isolation uh, watching. Oh, yeah. Well, it's very violent and kind of scary. So if, you know, it's definitely yeah. NC-17 kind of uh, situation. Sure. Yeah. I think I'll stick with Frozen 2. <laughs> All right, everyone. So um, so this is the activity. So just, just a few um, um, in, in the chat, if anyone just wants to, uh, you know, type their impressions and and as you're, as you're doing that, I, you know, there's a lot of different ways of using Padlet and there's different formats. Kate's gonna be using one uh, format for her activity later, um, but I definitely recommend exploring it. I find it, and it's really, really easy to use on your mobile device too. In fact, the app, you know how um, some apps have that thing, like if you use Evernote or, or OneNote where you can do the save to, or Pinterest, you can do save to Pinterest, save to Evernote. You can do that with Padlet, and it's like if you're on a, a website and you're like, oh, I want to put this on my Padlet corkboard, you can just save it to a specific corkboard, and it's really, it's really slick and cool. I, I love it. Um, so great. So here's one tool. So um, just in the chat, just your impression of that. So Gabby, can you just talk through an example of how you use this in, in business? I think she's frozen again activity and um yeah actually let me um let me share my screen again i think that might be better hold on i'm 
too many things open and I, I'm having a hard time finding my Zoom um, toolbar. Do you, you, you don't seem, oh, here it is. Weird, okay. All right, oh, it's crashing. All right, I'm gonna have to go out and come back in, folks. I'm just noticing how much blue is in everybody's backgrounds. Kind of interesting. Hmm. And Jen has a cool gallery wall back there. Hmm. I like your gallery wall, Jen. Thank you, thank you. He's cute. I love the pup and I also am intrigued by the pig behind Emily. I'm like, oh. what is that pig? I love it. I, know. I collect pigs. Oh, so there if, we you, go. if you were to actually look around my apartment, you would see them everywhere. And it's been so funny in meetings and training classes, everyone comments on it. And since a lot of people who are working from home and they have their kids, like they'll pop in and say, look at the pig, look at the pig. So, <laughs> definitely been a conversation piece. Funny. Yeah. So there was a question that came in through the chat and that was, um, uh, Athalie, am I saying your name right? Athalie, yep. Athalie, yep. great. She was saying, does Padlet record the responses like Zoom records this call? So that Padlet that we just created, it's there. And until I delete it, we could go oh, back to that and see it. In fact, you can go to that link after this session and add it if you want. It's, it's, it's there until you get rid of it. So. Mm. Oh, okay, cool. So it keeps it, like you said, it's a cork board. It keeps it there the whole time until you deleted it. Yep, exactly. So That's I just cool. want to share my screen and just show you a few other ways that I've used Padlet. So, um, hmm. dashboard. Okay. So I, can you record the, the, uh, the Padlet? Like, can you I, save stuff from the Padlet? Well, it, everything is saved. So like I've used this for other sessions. Like for example, mm -hmm. I, I, we did a performance support SIG and we created this Padlet here um, that is a collection of resources that we collected and um, in it's here. It's, it's slow to load at the moment. <laughs> but, um, but, Trust me, it's here. It's really here. But it, but it doesn't go anywhere. Like it, it stays there, right? So it's, it's oh. in, in move it so and it's great like it even got like you know bob mosher to like add stuff to it from from uh and we've got all kinds of different resources and links which wow. is really, really cool right and i've even used it like when you know my cousin was coming to visit me um in new york you know and i created a padlet like we both on our phone were looking for like okay stuff for her to do um, while she's in New York, right? And this was a few years ago, but um, yeah, so so we kind of, uh, it's, I don't know why it's taking so long to load. It's just, yeah. So, so yeah, we had all kinds of stuff like this and links like that. And one thing that I've done um, recently, which I can share with you is like these, all those learning resources that are coming out right now um, because of the social distancing, all the free deals and stuff like that, I actually have started collecting them, like all these free things. Hmm. Um, so I've started using Ooh. that. Oh, cool. Can I have a link to that one? Right. <laughs> I second that. Oh. In fact, that I'll, sounds I'll, amazing. In fact, what I can do is I will put it in the chat right now. Oh my God, that's awesome. Yay. So yeah, just, I'll, I'll warn work. you, be careful. You're going to get overwhelmed. There's so much stuff you're going to do out there and you're not going to have time to do it. Yep. This is I've, I've become much more be frustrated fun. because I know you've got, you've got access to all this stuff, but you don't have time to get into all of it. So. Yeah. And then I, I in the car, seems like I'm looking because there's other, um, there's other uh, formats. So I'm just trying to think, oh, here, learning trends. I think this might be one. Hmm. This was from a conference I went to, and, and you can actually link things like this, right? Things that are kind of linked together. Well, that's cool, the arrows. Yeah, so, so you can actually do links this way. Um, and when you, when you create Padlets, there are, um, hmm. there, there's all these different, so you can do the canvas here. I've been using the shelf sure. is what we did. You can do kind of like what looks like a chat. So there, there are all these different um, 
options. So it's definitely worth exploring. I, I really like it. And I, I, there are other kind of like posted apps that are out there, but I find this is the most user friendly of the ones that I've used. So. Wow. Cool. Any other questions? No? Okay. So then I'm going to hand it over. I'm going to stop sharing. And Jack, I'm going to hand it over to you. Now, you said you had stuff you wanted to share, so we're going to have to give you presenter rights. Yep, that sounds um, good. Okay, so I'm going to make you a co-host. Here we go. We can see a screen. Fantastic. Okay, let me get, get on the right mode. All right, everyone see the screen okay? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, terrific. So this is about uh, an experiment for my writing workshop and webinars to see whether it makes sense for people to give, to give some immediate feedback. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna get the video back, all right? So are your emails sincere? Your colleagues will tell you. So when we write, particularly in these times, we want to be sincere. We want to come across as being genuine and say not phony. It's a real challenge nowadays, particularly within a company or with everything happening. So the objective today, or tonight I should say, is explore the effectiveness of real-time peer rating of writing exercise and enhancing the learnings, learning experience and motivating participants. In other words, with this type of quick peer reading that I'll show you, would, do you believe this, is, th this will enhance the learner's experiences? Because I've never done this before. So Jack, are you saying that in, this would be in a class type situation? Yes. And people would like peer review each other's, okay, gotcha. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so. The agenda, I'm gonna quickly, I'm gonna review examples of say phony versus sincere messages and you may disagree with me on, on what constitutes that, but that's not that important now. We'll complete a brief writing exercise, those who want to, we have a few, a few who do it, that would be great. We'll submit a, a few people will submit a Likert scale rating, in other words, from which I'll show you on how sincere this message is and then a couple of you will, will, who have rated it will give some justification on, on why you did so. And then we'll discuss it. So let's go to the, some examples of, this is a manager talking to an employee. Is this a sincere message? You've been working at home for three weeks now. Let me reiterate that our company stands behind you. I remain committed to you and the other valuable members of the team. So I don't know about you, but this is just kind of a rote message, a company line, and I don't think employees would really get that their manager is coming across sincerely. Let's Agreed. try again. I'm sure it's been challenging you working at home three weeks now. I've had a hard time myself. Like me, you probably missed the face-to-face -face interaction we took for granted. So if there's anything I can do to help, please reach out to me. Now, we can discuss for a half hour the sincerity level of each of these messages. But just as, these are just examples of, I would consider the second message a lot more, coming across as a lot more sincere than the first message. All right, I'll pause any, any quick questions or comments before I continue. No, I think, Jack, I think it's more sincere, but I still think it could be almost a copy paste to every person on your team. Yeah, I think it should be, it be even, right. even more sincere. It could be more tailored to the specific person if you're really trying to make that connection. Absolutely. Good, great point, Greg. Yeah, not the same one to all 10 people. Right. Agreed. So here is the, um, the Likert scale statement, which you've seen before. Uh, well, you haven't seen this before. So this is the question. As an employee, I would find this email message from my supervisor to be sincere. And we'll go to the, the five point Likert scale and I've numbered them for 
So when we submit our ratings, make it simpler. Okay, so here is the exercise. Again, not everyone has to do it for those who would like to do it. Well, the background is, as a mid-level manager, you've been told by your boss that your team's productivity has dropped by 20% since everyone started working at home on February 1st. And here's the bad news. Starting April 13th, all 10 of the employees on your team have to work an, an extra hour a day, nine hours a day instead of eight hours. How does that sound? Oh, and no. plus, in the past couple of weeks, a lot of your employees have been complaining that it's been difficult working at home. So your mission is write the first few sentences of an email announcing this change to your team. And we'll assume it's gonna be the same email to all 10 of your employees. All right, so anyone who would like to do that, just um, what you can do is if you have your Word file open, you can do it in Word and paste it into the chat box. If not, you can just type right into mm -hmm. through, through the chat box. All right, so we'll uh, pause for a few minutes while those of you who like, yeah, just write the first few sentences of the email. Mm -hmm. Anyone know how I get the video? The the video back. I've lost the videos of all the participants. Is there a way to get that back? View options. View options. Oh, that's on the side by not, side mode. I think it's is that where the because do I have to stop share to do that? Oh, you have a different view because you're sharing this. But yeah. all you can do is see a few on a side at the top. Like that's the most you can see. Okay. There should be a window right up on the right of your screen and you can change how you look and it has like one square or two squares or three squares. I think the, the chat box is blocking that. Let me try to move that over. Oh, here we go. It's on the side. Okay. The chat box was blocking it. Here we go. Okay, great. I, I do want to see everybody. Bless you. Thank you. Okay, so we already have submissions. So we'll wait a couple of minutes if you, uh, more of you want want to submit. All right, let's go about one more minute. And I'm gonna have each of you who, who, if you don't mind, who wrote it, the ones I see in the chat room to read yours out loud. And um, as you're reading it, I'll ask anyone who wants to rate it. So what I'll do is let me see if I can go back. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. We have, I see three of them right now. Um, Jan, you wanna read yours out loud? Sure. Important update. In this challenging time, we seem to be rewriting the narrative every day. In order to continue to be successful as an organization, we must remain agile. To that note, in order to increase productivity, which has dropped 20%, Okay, I'm sure you had some, th something af after that. Okay, all right, so anyone have any, any feelings? Like, how would, you, how would you rate that? We, in other words, on a, on a 
um, a one to five scale, five being the best in terms of sincerity. Would it be helpful to read through all of them first and then read them? Like, do you want to do it in comparison or like, how do you feel for the first one from one to five? Um, I think it's individually, yeah. Like, yeah, well, this is, I guess I've never done this. <laughs> I'm open to suggestions on, on how, how to do it. So you yeah. don't have any, any feelings on that. Just, you know, maybe for each one, one or two people can comment. I think that, that might be good. This way we get comments on a lot of the submissions. So this is Greg. I would rate this a three. Um, it sounds very company speak to me. Um, I think they're trying to show that they understand, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really set up the whole, okay. why we have to do this 20% thing and how we're going to, one, it doesn't give the bad news. It just says productivity to drop 20%, not that you're going to have to stay an extra hour each day. Right. Well, I think it was, which will happen later. Yeah, it'll happen later on. They'll, they'll right. call it back later on. Yep. All right. Um, Nadia, you want to read yours, please? Jack, can uh, I ask a quick question first? Sure. Um, I was just curious if, if the idea maybe would be that we were all going to type a number into the chat. Like, were you trying to sort of crowdsource on the Likert scale and kind of... Um, I, I might do that, but in, in view of time, I don't think we can do that. I'd rather get, get every, a chance for everyone to get some feedback. And, but that, that might be a good idea for actually when I actually do it. That, that was my feeling, but I've never done this suggestions are open for, for what I'm doing right now and for the future, so. Yeah, Jack, I like Suzanne's suggestion, but you can get everybody to give a, you know, give those scale in the chat, but then get one or two people, whatever the average was, okay. and get one of those, say, whoever rated a three, give me some feedback on why you rated a three. And that's, that way you can kind of narrow okay. it down a little bit from there. All right, I great, like that idea. so yeah. um, that's a great idea. Uh, Nadia, you wanna read yours? Sure. Can, can I, I just I... throw in one more quick thing before to follow up on that? Sure. You could you could also possibly put up a, a quick poll and then ask that question. Like you would see how everybody rated it and maybe say if whoever would give it a three, could you give me a comment? Right. Yeah, I, I know about the polls. I just wanted to keep this exercise as simple, simple as possible. Yeah. But I think I think the poll is a great idea. So okay. Um, so I definitely hit send before I was finished and maybe I also misunderstood because I, I thought that we're just like quickly, quickly setting it up but not going into a full on detail because that would require more time. Um, I wrote, I hope everyone is staying healthy. I know we have faced unprecedented challenges and I'm sorry to say that I'm afraid I have an even more challenging request coming below. Wow. And I didn't. I didn't continue. I would like lay out the case. Yeah, well, I think I'm going to say I think it's great the way you started. I think you really get, it, it comes across as, as, as uh, very, very sincere. So, all right, we have a, a lot of people. So I'll tell you what, for all those who wrote, if somebody who would like to volunteer, I don't think we have time to read all of them. Yeah, maybe, um, maybe Jack, what we could do is just if people scan through them, the one that they think sounds the most sincere. <laughs> out of what people wrote. Sure, let's do that. Okay. So maybe what we could ask people to do is in the chat box, put in the first name of the person who you believe wrote the most sincere email. That works.
All right, so let's let's wrap this up. And um, uh, would somebody like to volunteer and talk about why why they gave a certain person the highest score? And we can go over th that one. And we can talk about it for a couple of minutes. So who would like to who would like to volunteer and explain why they chose a certain email? Um, I, I'll go. I, I so, several of them were good, but the ones that I I, I liked most, and I put Suzanne uh, was it just mm -hmm. it seemed it seemed personal and in, in like like wow I can relate. Yes, it feels like it's been months. Like yeah. it 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 was it was personal. It didn't sound like corporate HR speak, mm -hmm. um, and it showed empathy for people's you know for the fact that it's. A difficult situation, right? So it, it, it was just kind and relatable and showed empathy. So I like that. Yeah, agreed. The way, even though it's mm -hmm. only been for many of us, it was like a we, a real we feeling. Great. Very good. Okay. Someone else to um, share why they picked a certain one, uh, one or two submissions. This is Rosemary. I like Nadia's. Although it's incomplete, to me it looks like it's um, She's empathizing with employees. She's first of all asking them, you know, hoping that they're staying well, I mean, healthy, despite what's going on. And then she's talking about the, the challenges they're facing. So I think that is empathizing with the employees and she's more sincere when talking to them. Agreed. Yeah, I thought Nadi's had, opening was excellent. I'm sure the rest would be as well. All right, let's do a couple more because I know, Gabby, you want to move on to the next session. So. Um, can Someone I jump else. in one? What I really liked that, Afali, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. What I really liked um, that you did toward the end was um, kind of suggesting that you guys were all going to figure it out together, that you were going to, you know, there might have been a suggestion for what needed to happen, but that you really had trust in your team that you can all be adults and figure it out and that there might not be a one size fits all solution. Yeah. Yeah, you. I like the fact that you you went kind of a step further in figuring out, like anticipating what the challenges are going to face and giving them an option. So maybe making the news not as bad as it originally. Well, it's still bad extra hour, but uh, laying out some options. All right, let's. Have and also one. giving yeah. people the understanding that they're like humans who might be homeschooling, like you said, might be homeschooling kids or who just might work more effectively at 9 p.m. than say during work hours, you know? Gotcha, yeah. okay. Okay. Jack, I know you're trying to move on. I wanted to um, share, if you had asked me this exercise like six months ago, I would have written something totally different. Mm -hmm. And I really like some of the more elaborate ones people shared, but I wanted to share where my approach comes from. It's mm -hmm. directly from Chris Voss, um, he has a book called Never Split the Difference. He is a, the FBI international hostage negotiator for many years. Mm -hmm. um, I highly recommend you guys check out his book. He talks about the use of um, tactical empathy mm -hmm. and delivering bad news. And can you put that in the, bot, in the chat? Yes, I can. Specifically, his approach is that um, in written form via email, delivering bad news should start always with telling people you're delivering bad news by di directly stating up front, hey, I know this sucks and I'm just, I'm going to make this suck even more. And he talks like this. He's very yeah. unfiltered. Yeah. The moment you read that, it softens psychologically the blow. You bro it makes people brace themselves. And when they read, I'm I have bad news. Here's the bad news. They immediately don't perceive it as, as tragically and as bad uh -huh. as, as it is. And I, it's a very tiny little trick that I was not aware of. And I've mm -hmm. practiced it in real life. And it, it really works. It's kind of amazing. And I'll, mm -hmm. I'll stop here and I'll post about the book. Separately. That's terrific. I mean, I think that that that's great because there's a real talk about sincerity. It's being upfront. It's being it's being candid and and not people know. Hey, this person is not fooling me. He or she's telling me the truth, and I can, I I can maybe I can, now I can deal with it. Literally, yes. He yeah. talks about like building trust by saying what you're gonna say before you say it. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. 
all right, maybe it's a good time. Jack, yeah, I just want to say, you know, um, this is really good flexing. And this is what I love about the learning lab and having to do it like in a real situation of like, oh, we're a time limit. I said I was going to keep it in this and I was going to do that number thing, but let's, let's, you know, do it differently. And I actually thought that the way it ended up, the fact that we kind of read through all, put the ones we thought were most sincere and talked through, I thought that actually worked really well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting how sometimes when you try to test things on live situations, sometimes you'll find something that's even better than what you planned due to the constraints. So um, I thought that was really interesting. So thank you for, for bringing that. Oh, thank, thank you. Um, I mean, and again, I, I lo yeah. love these suggestions. So anyway, any, any final discussion? Um, I think we, we learned a lot about uh, what a sincere email, what it means and all that. So now the question uh, to all of you, can you see this working well in a, a workshop or a webinar situation? In a workshop, I could certainly project the certain, um, certain uh, submissions on a screen, uh, on, a, on the power on a big screen. So um, yeah, I'd love to hear some, some feedback on whether this would work in, a, in a, a workshop or webinar situation, let's say with 10 or 15 people, as many as we had tonight. I think one, the fact that it's interactive, that it forces them to, I think everybody would have to do the exercise and then they can peer review it with each other yeah. and then they can learn from each other. And that's what you really want is that peer to peer learning. Mm -hmm. um, people who've been in that situation before and can share that, that knowledge and sure. inform, help inform going forward. I think I it think would be really uh, interesting. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Um, I think uh, also there's a functionality on Zoom where you can actually break people out into discussion groups. Yeah, yeah. And um, which we used when I was in grad school because we did a lot of Zoom for classes. Mm -hmm. um, and you can break people out into discussion groups. So say everybody takes their, t you know, their five, 10 minutes to write their beginning of their email. And then if it's a large group, this is especially useful because you break people out into say groups of three mm -hmm. and then you come back and you only have like five people to hear from instead of 15 you sure. know sure. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe what you know to add to that maybe they're in the breakout groups they re they rewrite something yeah. to make it more sincere wow like, okay sure I don't, I don't know if that's something that you've already created for them or that they you know everybody writes something and the one that's least sincere they select and and re I'm not sure how yeah, that usually what I do is I give them uh, like one that's poor and have them like revise it mm. uh, let me ask you all this before I take even more comments mm -hmm. what do you think I just for this purpose of the learning lab I created this five point Likert scale do you believe the the the, the numerical scale is is effective or should it be just all qualitative feedback I don't feel like we used it very much. Yeah. I, I, I think maybe, Jack, the, the first one you showed where you showed the, like you showed like the, the less sincere version, the canned one that you had, and then the more sincere version, maybe for those have people rate. Great idea. Scale, like say, okay, how would you rate that? And then show the next one and then how you rate it. I okay. would use it for those, wow. but I actually liked the qualitative feedback for mm -hmm. the stuff that people actually wrote. Right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Because if you write an email, you're not going to get a Likert scale on it. You're going to get that, you know, how people feel. So that mm -hmm. thing needs to come through. Right. And if you, yeah. if you don't want them to talk, for example, maybe use the annotate and they use a check mark hmm. or an X, you know. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Good idea. What I typically do is, you know, if I have a, a workshop or a webinar, I invite, say, I say everyone has to do the exercise, but I'll let a few people share their versions and then I, I give them real, real time feedback or sometimes put people in, in teams where, where they, where they, where, where they, um, they just give feedback. But I think what we learned uh, tonight is that maybe focus on one, this, this time we focused, we didn't focus on whether it was concise or this, that we just focused on one on real on sincerity. And I think that that's where the, the, the discussion comes from like, what are the qualities that make it sincere? Right. That's what I was just going to say. Oh, go ahead. One, one more comment and then we're going to. Sure. I don't know um, 
exactly how to do it. Like I'm almost thinking you could do it in a combination maybe with the, the Padlet somehow, but um, as I heard the comments that we were all making about the different emails, some different words like empathy came up a few right. times as well as what Nadia brought forth about kind of like get in and get out with the bad news. Mm -hmm. And it would be interesting as a learning experience for your students to kind of crowdsource the, you know, maybe top three or four elements that really create sincerity and trust um, okay. in an email. I don't know exactly how to facilitate that, but I think the Likert scale, I think was intended to kind of create data and be something concrete. Mm -hmm. And maybe if what the learners left with was concrete in a different way, that it was more of like a list of attributes, that exactly. could be okay. kind of interesting. Wow, that's a great, wow, this, this is cool. Very cool, mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, this is what I love about having these conversations and yeah. trying to about, could you kind of build on activities? So uh, this is great. I did want to give people a break. Um, so what I'd like to do um, and, and actually, before we do that, I just know I, we've heard a lot from some people. I, we haven't heard a lot. Um, Barbara, um, Emily, Deborah, do you have anything you want to add before we, and Anne, um, do you, okay. any of you have anything that you'd like to add before we take a quick break? Um, yes, I think I'll add, I will add something. Another thing that I liked about Nadia's um, email was we we focused on sincerity, but it was also concise in that it didn't beat around the bush. It was just, it was straightforward. And I think maybe as an employee reading the email, if they if they start to feel that the um, sender of the email is beating around the bush, it's like it makes it more. Um, arousing in a negative way like what what's going on but when it's straightforward it's like okay so that's it is what it is thank you Deborah. yes agreed absolutely mm -hmm. i also would like to add on to the conversation that pointing out those nice words that came out like empathy and then having the little model that, that Nadia used, it might be useful and fun for people to then try to use those tools in another session, just like they to type in again, you know, okay, now let me apply those. Mm -hmm. With those things in mind, let me try to be more empathetic. Let me try to get the bad news out first. Right, maybe have one exercise and then point it out and then have a similar exercise, see how, much, how, how they can apply those qualities. Right, right. Wow. I'm just enjoying this whole session. Yeah, me too. It's a really <laughs> great too. way uh -huh. for people to be uh -huh. engaged. And that's what I really care about with my students. So I'm finding, where, <coughs> yeah, I'm seeing how you're all engaging us. So thank you for that. You're welcome. And one thing that I would like to try and learn more about, we do tons of virtual facilitation and meetings, but what we have not done a lot of is the breakout sessions. So I don't remember who mentioned that, but just, yeah, maybe in the future and, and some of these activities, just doing some practice or getting, um, you know, some tips from everybody on that would be yeah. fantastic. Emily, I've, I've done uh, breakout oh, sessions. plan on doing Zoom with, um, Yeah, with NYU. So if you want to contact me, I'm happy okay. to show you. Great, great. One thing, Emily, with breakout sessions is mm -hmm. you can tell the people, you know what, when you're about to wrap up your breakout session, because we're going to have someone speak about what you all spoke about, choose your, choose your, choose your person who's going to be your speaker. Mm -hmm. And then that way you don't have all three people from the breakout session all talking. You just get mm -hmm. one speaker from each breakout. Fantastic. Great. Yeah. So what I'd like to do now is, is take a five minute break and then um, we probably, and of the two activities Kate and I had planned, we probably only have time for one of them. And so what, what I'll do when we come back is, is actually explain that to you. I do want both of our activities actually, we're going to use the breakout rooms. So either way, you'll get to see that. Oh, yay. Uh, so, <laughs> so we're actually going to do that. Um, and, and just actually before we go um, to the break, 
Is there anyone that like, what, one of the main reasons you came tonight was you wanted to see the radical candor activity? Or, okay, that's one of the main reasons you came. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure because we publicized and, and so we'll, we'll do a little bit of that and I think we can um, abbreviate the other thing because the second activity was actually meant to be pairing people up based on interest to put together experiments for the next learning lab. So that's really what that was about. So um, everyone, why don't we come back in about five minutes? So let's say 20-ish after, start gathering, of, so that's actually four minutes, but like. That's okay, we'll make it. <laughs> You're about, we'll come back. And actually, Kate, why don't you and I go into a breakout room for a minute so we can just uh, strategize about what we're doing when we come back from break. Cool. Okay, See you all in five minutes. All, all right. right. Everyone. Why you might call on mute. Can you yeah. put us in breakout room or should I? Can you make me host? Not co host, host. Okay. Now I'll do it. One second. That was interesting, Jack. Oh, thank you very much. I think it went very well. It's great to be able to uh, to try it out like this. Yeah, it's a great what a great opportunity for me. Yeah, yeah. I did when we had the first learning lab, the live one. I I also tried something too, and what a great um, opportunity to get to get feedback in in this. Yeah, that's really cool. So is it, is that your specialty? Communications at work is yeah yeah business business writing uh, uh, PR writing business writing I give uh, live workshops webinars I do a lot of one on one coaching develop tutorials yeah it, basically I help people get get better results from their writing that's good that's great very much very needed right <laughs> well, now refresh my memory I don't know if I talked to you about what you do. No, you, we haven't. Um, this is my first, um, what's well, my first virtual meeting with ATD. Oh, right. And I went to two other meetings previously. One when I was a member most recently and one when I wasn't. Um, but I am a consultant and coach um, and I work with teams. Mm -hmm. Most of it revolves around strategy and communications, but verbal communications right. and miscommunications. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's fun. Good. Somebody's asking me about about the the, the pictures. Uh, so mostly from Pixabay. That's where I get the pictures. Yeah. Very cool. And the other one. The other one is um. What's that other picture one? That's the that's free. Unsplash. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Greg. I think eventually you figure out where all the free pictures are. <laughs> Actually, it's, somebody had to tell me because I, I was using 
Google Images where you can find everything, but they're just not as not right. As yep. Mm -hmm. I usually use Google Images to figure out what I'm actually looking for. Right. So it gives me ideas and I'm like, oh, I want a picture that has this, 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 and then I can go and try to find it or I create it myself. Right. Okay. Through Canva. Everybody knows about Canva? Yep. No. Canva. Yeah. Canva. Refresh my memory. Sort of. Canva is a free online graphic program. You can create posters, cards. Mm -hmm. um, it's got all the um, templates for LinkedIn, Facebook, all those things already pre-set up. You can just fill them, create whatever you want, and then download it. Yep. What I like about it is that it keeps a copy on Canva. So you have to download a copy. And if you like, for, we're working on the conference for ATD, uh, ATD Forte conference it's supposed to be April 2nd. Well, it's been postponed now to August at this point. So I've got to go in and take all the graphics and update the, mm. the date. For a traditional program, I wouldn't be able to do that. I have to recreate the whole thing all over again. With this, I can just actually go back into Canva, change the date, redownload it, and we're good to go. Is that spelled C-A-N-V-A. Yes, oh, C-A-N-V-A dot com. Yep, it's free. So cool. There's a paid version and a free version. Oh. Um, a lot of free um, video, not videos, um, photos and images and things like that, that you can use, but they also have other ones that you pay for. And anything you, it's, every image is a dollar. Yeah, and once you once you pay that dollar, then you can use it from that point on. I've never paid for one, but mm -hmm. some I usually look for one that I like. If it's paid, then I go and create it myself. <laughs> so. hey, and so and it's Greg, it's worth upgrading. Um, yeah, like if you so make a lot of really materials, cool stuff. yeah, because you can make one flyer and then resize it to make it right. portrait, yes. landscape, yes. Instagram. Oh, like it's fantastic. Right. I use it almost every day. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then do different backgrounds and they, yeah. you, know, the, uh, you can create your own gifts and things like that or gifs or whatever you want to call them. So yeah, yeah. really, really cool stuff you can do with the paid version too. So mm -hmm. what do you do with it every day? I make flyers. I have to help with social media. I contest for my sites. It's yeah. Oh, so cool. And I'm not very good at graphics, so <laughs> it makes it easy, makes very it really, easy, it very, easy, very yeah. easy, even better. Even yeah, better. yeah. Hey, folks, I'm I'm back, and and um, I got a job offer. Oh, Yay! sweet! Yay! That's awesome, Gabby. <laughs> Gabby, I'm so, so happy excited. for you. Oh my God, <laughs> oh my that's gosh, amazing. Wow. Let me tell you. Yeah. So I I I knew that I was I was going to be losing my job. Like I my last day was Friday the thirteenth, and I knew that that was. Oh. <laughs> I've been interviewing for, for months, actually, and um, I had made it to the final rounds, like really serious rounds for, for four different companies. All four of them froze their hiring. Oh. So I was like this close to an offer, and they all were like, oh, we, we can't hire anymore. Our hiring is completely on hold. Yep. Um, so it was super, super frustrating, but it looks like I got something. So I'm really happy. Great. Yay! <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, really great. So, uh, so great. So we're going to go right into the radical candor activity. So, um, using your um, the participant, like the little um, green check mark or the red. Um, X, can those of you who are familiar with radical candor, can you click the green yes? If you are not, I uh, put the red no. And you can do that by going to the participant list. I'm just curious who, who's heard of it. Yeah, and then you can do the little check. Okay, so so far it looks about half and half. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. So <laughs> I'm going to share my screen. Dum, da dum, dum. Uh, and hopefully it won't. Hopefully it will not uh, crash on me, but we'll see. Okay. Um, so, um, Radical Candor is a, a, a big deal right now. It, it's um, a book that is an international bestseller. People talk about it a lot. Um, we actually read it as part of our ATD book club that we've been doing. So it's something that people are talking about a lot now. Um, now I used to, hold on, can you all see my screen? Yep. Yes. Yes. Yep. yes. Great. So a bazillion years ago, you can actually see the date there, it was back in 2007, I used to teach this course called Interacting Assertively, <clears throat> and I did an activity for that, and actually it also had a four quadrant model that actually really kind of almost identically overlays 
with the quadrants used by the radical candor model. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, hmm, can I repurpose this activity? So my experiment today is, is there's two questions I have. One is, can this activity be, does it work for the radical candor model? I suspect it does, mm -hmm. but it's untested. I'm not exactly sure. Mm -hmm. um, and in the, and uh, also, this is an activity that I used to do um, in person. So can this also be done virtually using virtual tools? So um, I had put in, in the um, reminder, um, had asked that you either print this, this quadrant model or do a handwritten version. And if you, if you look at me in, in, in the, uh, the gallery view here, um, can you all see? Yeah. Can you see this? So yeah, this. So this is what we're going to need for this activity. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is show you there's a model that um, I used to use in this assertiveness course. And in that model, um, and, and actually this course, it's going to be interacting assertively with radical candor. And although I just noticed my typo, that it says condor instead of candor, which is why I'm glad this is an experiment. <laughs> All right. So, um, so for the model, uh, there's two skills in terms of how we communicate with people that really influences our behavior, um, how we behave and also how people perceive our behavior. And the first spectrum is silence to directness. So, so on, on one end of the spectrum is saying nothing. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum is your flies down, like, like just mm -hmm. very direct, right? Um, there's another spectrum. Um, and, and of course, this is like kind of openness, how open you are about what you're trying to communicate. So low openness would be a zero, then the, as direct as you can possibly get would be a 10 and then everything in between. Now, the other spectrum is, uh, I'm going to call it caring and swearing, and this is uh, consideration for others. Um, and mm -hmm. on one end of this, you have um, high consideration for others. Your first and foremost in your mind is what other people's needs are, what their point of view is. On the other end, on the swearing end, you're thinking about yourself. It's all your needs, you're muttering beneath your breath or, or out loud, your, 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 your attitude towards them is, is very negative. Um, so these are the two spectrums. Um, now, this, in terms of being assertive, you really want to be high in both of these areas. You wanna be very high in the consideration for others and also very high in terms of like your openness and how direct that you are. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like everyone to do is again, go to go back to the annotation tools and pick a stamp. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry, I just keep seeing the chat. And so I'm like, I, I was doing that. I will leave, I will, Kate, I'm gonna leave you to monitor the chat. Um, so, uh, so go and pick a stamp. And what I'd like you is to do is on, on this scale of the openness, put a stamp where you think you are on the scale most of the time in most situations. Sorry, where are the stamps again in this? So, I forgot. Yeah, you click annotate and then stamp. You Anna, all, annotate that? is under view options, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Ah, thank you. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So we've got quite a wide spectrum there. Oh, actually, no. Here. And again, if, if you put something somewhere where you don't mean to, if you go to clear and do clear my drawings, it will clear it. Clear. Great. All right. So now, uh, and I'm going to clear everyone because we're going to go to the next, um, the next slide. Oops, sorry. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do the same thing for the other spectrum. Go to the an view, annotate, stamp, 
and put where you think you are most of the time in terms of the consideration for others. This is where I'm happy this is anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Wow, and really, all, Karen, you are 10? In, in all of these sorts of self-assessments, people always rate themselves higher than other people would. It, it's just the, the, you know, the way it is. And, and what's interesting about this, so, so, so it's the most of the time part of it, right? Because we're going to do an exercise that, that talks about how we do this in relation to specific contexts. All right, so I'm going to clear everything right now, and we're going to go to the next slide. I keep, <laughs> I, I keep forgetting to turn my little stamp off here. Okay, um, so now, and then how about, my goodness, okay. Oh, okay, so if you were to put yourself now on both of these, okay, mm -hmm. now that we've done both, where would you be for here? And then use the stamp again to place you where you think you would be. And be honest, right? You want to be honest. <laughs> okay. Now, thank you, everyone. I'm going to clear this. Every single time I do that, I forget to turn my stamp off when I go to try to click to the next slide. So, sorry. So in the model that I used to do in terms of the assertiveness training, this, these were the, the different um, uh, behaviors that we were looking at. The high consideration and openness was assertive. Um, high openness, but low consideration for others was aggressive. Um, low openness, high consideration for others, passive, and then low in both, passive, aggressive. Now, what's interesting and why I thought this was related to radical candor is because if you look at the radical candor um, model, it really mm. overlays with it pretty much perfectly. It does. Wow. Right? And, and this was something I was doing back in 2007. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, and I think there's been other models that have used those mm -hmm. spectrums. I mean, she names it a little bit differently. Um, she calls, you know, um, passive aggressiveness, manipulative insincerity, um, and then passiveness, ruinous empathy. I kind of like those terms. Um, so this is why I'm like, okay, let's, let's try to do this activity in relation to this. Now, can't, radical canter is often um, talked about in relation to how to give feedback, but I would say it, it applies to all communication. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask you um, some questions, and each question has a letter associated with it. So the first one, for example, is when dealing with a person behaving in a way that is aggressive, meaning they have low consideration for others but are very high in directness, my tendency is to behave in a way that is. Now, what I want everyone to do is on here, put where you are in response to a person who is behaving aggressively. So you can use the stamp for that, okay? And notice, you know, that that last question where you most of the time, all of us were like in that upper right quadrant. Notice how we're spread out quite a bit more now, right? In relation to how other people are behaving, right? So, so depending on how people behave towards you, often that will trigger specific behavior in ourselves. Now, what I also want you to do is on your handwritten version, okay, and is this first question was, was A, I want you to write the letter A wherever you put your icon here. Your handwritten version. Okay, so I'm gonna put say that again. So so the first question was was question number A. Um, wherever you put your little icon on the screen on your handwritten version that I asked you to print or to draw, 
I want you to write the letter A where you are in relation to someone who's behaving aggressively. So for example, here, I put mine here. I, I wrote the letter A. Make sense? <clears throat> yep. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear this. <coughs> and we're gonna go to the next question. If I can advance my screen. Oh, where'd B go? Okay, so the next one is when dealing with a person who's behaving in a way that is passive. So that means they have a high consideration for others, but they're not being direct. They're not being very open or forthcoming. And what you do is put your stamp on the screen and then put the letter B wherever you place your stamp on your handwritten version. So as we go through these questions, you're gonna have A, B, C, D um, on the chart, uh, on your handwritten chart, okay? Mm -hmm. Can you put the question? Yeah, Gabby, can you put the question back? Oh, sure. So someone who's behaving in a way that is passive, they have high consideration for others, high caring, but low openness. They're not being um, very forthcoming or direct. I have a hard time putting that in a real context so I can imagine my response. It sounds too conceptual. What would be, what would be an example of someone who's highly caring, but silent. So, so office, a lot of people do this in terms of giving um, negative feedback. So they'll say, oh, that, yeah, that, no, I really like that. That was really, that, that was really good. Um, or they won't, you know, you, you can tell that. Um, they don't want to hurt your feelings. Don't want to hurt so your they're feelings. they're very caring. Yeah. But they're exactly. not telling you what you need to hear. So that's where the silence comes in. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Very no, thank you, because I couldn't figure out a, an option for that until you started saying that. Right. And don't forget to put the letter B on your handwritten sheet or your printed sheet wherever you place your icon here on the screen. Okay. And we're going to, I'm going to clear that. And we're going to go on to the next one. So C, this is passive aggressive. So this is somebody who has low consideration for others and they're also not being forthcoming. So this is someone, an example would be somebody who's like, oh, fine, I don't mind doing that. But then they go back to their desk and they start slamming things, right? <laughs> or, or they, or they, um, it's 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 when people um, kind of um, silently sabotage because they're mad about something, but they won't be direct about it. So for that, um, place yourself in terms of people behaving in a way that is low in uh, low in consideration for others and low in openness. interesting. We're moving around a lot more, right, in these different contexts. All right, I'm going to clear these. And then what I'd like everyone to do. Oh, no, D, the last one. Oh, the D is assertive. So when people are behaving assertively, how do you respond? And then write the letter D on your handwritten version. Say hi. Say hi. Oh. Hi. <laughs> I want. I missed. I, I want to see. This oh. is my youngest. My youngest. Oh. He's eleven months now. He's eleven months yesterday. So. Oh. How many do you have? We have two. Okay. I want a kitty. In the tail. Yeah. We got granite to be a playmate to Griffin, and then we found out that Griffin doesn't want a playmate. <laughs> so he wanted to be his own little kitty. So uh, it's been interesting. Oh, interesting.
interesting. I'm getting a, a message that says, low system resource may affect your This is Dorito. He was sitting oh, oh, watching the all the time. <laughs> Cute. Dorito. Okay, I just got booted from the program. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay. I love all the names. <laughs> I didn't give my cat his name. He had his name at the shelter, and so I just kept it. And because I also, Doritos are delicious. So, <laughs> oh, I'm there. We're, we were right. very deliberate with our names. So I'm yeah. I'm Greg. So my partner's name is Graham. G R A. I'm G R E. Oh. So we have Griffin, who's G R I. Yeah. And this was supposed to be GRO, but we couldn't find any good names, so he ended up being GRA Granite again. So, oh. uh, Gromit, like Wallace. Yeah, and we just didn't think that like a really good name. <laughs> <laughs> Rover, you know, it just didn't. None of them really fit really well. So, <laughs> Groven. But anyway, sorry. Right. Back Can to the thing. Can you see my screen? Did I share my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Where am I? Okay. So what I'd like you all to do now, and, and and I we don't have to go through this, but what I'd like you to do is on your handwritten sheet. I'd like you to do the same thing we've been doing, but with these other contexts as well. So A through D were the ones we, um, we already did, but then E through L are in different contexts. So you might behave very differently with your friends and family than you do with someone who is more senior than you at work, right? So um, put that on your handwritten sheet. I'm gonna give you all just a few um, a few minutes to do that. Mm -hmm. And when you're done, can you go to the participant list and click the green check mark so I know that you're done? <clears throat> Not such an easy exercise. I was just going to say, I'm thinking this through very deeply. <laughs> Me too. Uh, <laughs> My partner's watching Frozen right now. Frozen two. <laughs> I can hear. I can hear. I can hear the uh, that haunting call. Pretty funny. <laughs> Again, when you're done, don't forget to go in and put the uh, green check mark in the participant list so I know that we're all done. Oh. So when when you're done, you should have something that, that looks, you know, that has all of the letters on one handwritten sheet. And if you're looking for the check mark, go to the participant window and right under where all of us are listed there, you'll see a a row of icons. The second one should be the yes button, the green check. I think we, we're just putting them on a slide instead of like. Oh, we're putting on the slide. Oh, that's not what you said, green check. And so I immediately went back to the uh, the original uh, version. So I'm sorry, sorry about that. No, 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 no. It, I, me I meant in the um, in the participant list. Okay. I did mean in the participant list. Okay. So Deborah, 
um, Emily and Rosemary. Just uh, I let me. You know got four you. checks on the on the other side, so that's probably yeah. everybody. Well, we put okay. Two checks. Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, what I would like everyone to do now is um, here. I'd like you to put the icon in. You're not allowed to put it in the assertiveness or radical candor um, square. I want you to just put in, in, and it doesn't have to be in the specific location, but I'd like you to place, and I'm going to clear the icons for a moment. Hold on. Um, what I want you to do is put your icon in um, the quadrant other than assertiveness that you had the most letters in. So where are you, other than the assertive quadrant, where are you most of the time? And if you were, if you were by any chance in here the whole time, which of these other three are you closest to? Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Great. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to call the group that's on the top left um, group one. So this would be the high caring, low openness. And then I'm going to call the group in the bottom right. So high directness, low uh, consideration for others. <laughs> the group two and we're um what we're going to do is we're just going to take and we're coming to a i really want to do the breakout rooms for like two minutes right so what we're going to do is we're going to do you know what i'm going to pause for a second i'm doing my my little mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right? okay. came out no, we, we, we have very little time. So in a, in, a, in a ideal situation, what we would do is we'd be putting you in breakout groups so that the people that were in the same square would be in the same breakout groups, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'd like you to do is just, um, Kate, can you just randomly assign everyone? Yeah. How many breakout rooms? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go in the breakout rooms and um, just so you know, um, and I just want to, It's the other deck that I need. Um, in the breakout rooms, um, there is an option. Oh, let me clear these. There is an option to mm -hmm. ask for help. So uh, you can do that when you're there. And also when you're in there, you can do whiteboard or other annotation. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like everyone to go and we're going to spend like maybe three or four minutes. We're not going to have enough time because, you know, I said we'd end at eight, but just what I'd like you to do in a real world, we'd go into breakout rooms. We'd be talking about why you were in these quadrants, yada, yada. But for the purpose of today, because people just wanted to try out the breakout rooms, what I want you to do is to go into the breakout rooms and for like three minutes just see all the tools and all the different things you can do in the breakout room and see what you can Great. figure out about what it's like to be in a breakout room and then Perfect. we're going to come back and end okay so for the purpose of this the purpose is to go in the breakout room and see what tools you can use while in a breakout room got it fantastic okay. thank fantastic. you fantastic um all right kate can you start us on the breakout rooms okie doke
Hey there. Hi. Is this the whole group now? It seems like we only have half the group. It takes them 60 seconds. There is a setting that takes 60 mm. seconds. Oh, okay. There's a site to leave. Like I thought I went back to the full group. Unless they click on leave the, the breakout room, they'll stay there until the it closes. Okay. So they found something we didn't find. <laughs> there we are. Excellent. Fantastic, everyone. So it, it we, we don't have much time and I know that like we could talk and debrief a long time, but I just want to um, maybe in the chat because I think it'll it'll be faster if we do it through chat. Just if everyone can put one um, reaction to the virtual breakout rooms and then also one thought reaction uh, feedback about the radical candor activity. So those two things about the, the breakouts and then also the, the radical candor. Or actually, do you know what I'm going to do is I have a poll for that. So I'm going to ask you yeah, ask a poll. Good. So we can see. Yeah. Does everyone see it? Yes, I do. <sighs> So, Gabby, real quickly, Kate, maybe you can help with this. When you, how did you set up that breakout, the breakout rooms? I did automatically. There are tons of videos online. And okay. So you can set up breakout videos. It's very easy. But I click the button. What you don't see is the button for breakout rooms. So I click that. There is an option to assign automatically, which is mm -hmm. just assigns automatically. It depends on how okay. many you set. Or assign by name and just drag people there. It takes oh, okay. a bit longer, and like maybe I would allow for two minutes for setup, just right. to, okay. depending on how many people join. Okay. You, I think you can also do it before the meeting starts in the back end too, as the host. I don't know how to do it because I don't know who will join. So I know, like for example, when people join, I can only drag those people in a group. If Got it. It's not there, I cannot. Got it. Makes sense. So there is an option to register in advance, uh, mm -hmm. but I didn't, I didn't explore it yet, so I don't know how it works. Interesting. So thank you so much, everyone. And it looks, has everyone voted in the poll? I think we have 13 yeah. participants, only 10 people responded. I think someone did it in chat. Oh, great, yeah, no, that's great. Thank you so much for the, the feedback. And, and if you have other, um, uh, you know, feedback for how to make it better. I would love to hear that, but I don't want to keep people over. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a stickler about ending on time, especially because it's so hard to sit for these Zooms. Yeah. Things, my goodness. <laughs> um, but, um, within the next day, you'll be getting a link for the, the um, session feedback. So definitely please do um, uh, complete that. Okay. And, um, and Kate, I'm so sorry, we don't have uh, time for your activity, but what we wanted to do was, uh, we really would like some volunteers to um, lead sessions for the next learning lab, which I'm, I'm almost 100% sure will also be virtual. So what I'd like to do is, is um, ask all of you if you would like to do something. If you're not sure what to do, I have a whole bunch of virtual icebreakers and activities that um, in my pocket that I would love to. If you want me to just give you one to lead, I'd be happy to do that, mm -hmm. right? So. Um, I will uh, follow up with everyone and ask for that. And we could just maybe even the next session spend a, more time just exploring the breakouts and stuff like that. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely. Um, and in the chat right now, also any other suggestions you have for future, future or for the next learning lab, which is May, Thursday, May 28th is the next one. I'm sorry, what was that? May? Thursday, May 28th is May the next 20th. learning lab. Okay. And, uh, and, and, you know, depending on how things go, we might start doing it more frequently. If we're doing it virtual, we just do it, might do, just do it more frequently and shorter. So instead of like every, every quarter having like two and a half hours, like doing like one hour sessions here and there. So um, we're going to think it through, but I, I would love your feedback. I'm so happy to see all these new people. Um, if you haven't. I'll be there in two seconds. What? Nothing. Go ahead. 
What? Um, so uh, what I'd like everyone to do um, as a closing, okay, and everyone's still on video, what I want you to do is I want you to do like a frozen still life selfie picture, like of, of how you're feeling having gone through this learning lab. So this is mine. <laughs> Yay! And I, I totally wanted to get out of this. Hold on. Okay, hold, hold, hold it, hold it. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold it. Yeah, got it? Okay. Games. Fantastic. So one All thing right. we, Gabby, one thing we talked about in our breakout was, well, we've been recorded, the video has been recorded with audio. We have an audio version as well, but the chat is also captured. It is. Zoom, so oh, we'll be able okay. to give you that. So you'll have all the links and things like that as well. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. This has been great. Thank you Thank so, you much, so much. much. Thank, Thank you both for everybody. hosting. At, uh, future Thank sessions. You. Yep. Yeah. Have a good night. Everybody stay great. safe. All, all right. right. Nice to meet you all. Bye. 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 I'm just reading through the chat because I hadn't finished reading through it. <laughs> Save it and read it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Can. Gabby, congrats again. Thank you. Oh, yes, congrats. Oh my Gabby. gosh, it's such a relief. Yes. And they want me to start like ASAP, so that's great. That's awesome. You're not going to be ever bored. <laughs> <laughs> Has been any, any other people who have facilitated a session in the middle found that they got a new job? That's, that's the first. That's the first. That's, oh my gosh, it's so such a relief. Because yeah. I mean, it's a rough time to be job hunting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's it never stopped you. So you're an inspiration for many. So I'm gonna go. Gabby, let me know if you want to. Uh, yep. Yep, I just I just want to finish reading the chat, so I finally did it. Thanks, glad to have you, Deborah, and thanks for uh, for facilitating tonight, Jack. Appreciate it. Yeah, my Thank pleasure. You. All right, Thank you, Deborah. Alrighty, bye bye. Bye.